If you have seen my most recent video, then you probably know by now of how excited I am with the new Helminth Chrysalis system. Basically, it's a new feature wherein we can sacrifice a Warframe to the Helminth room in our orbiter, then the sacrificed Warframe's subsumed ability will be available for use through the Helminth Chrysalis system. Now I did not guess the exact detail first about this new system, but upon further research, and with the help of my community, here's a little information that you should know about this new system. First of all, only normal frames can be a sacrifice on the Helminth Chrysalis. However, it seems like the subsumed ability from that sacrificed frame can be added to both normal and prime version of Warframes. Also, a normal frame doesn't need to be at max rank so you can sacrifice it to the Helminth system. It will take about 24 hours to get the subsumed ability and that particular subsumed ability can replace as many Warframe abilities as the player wants without having to sacrifice another Warframe of the same type. To subsume a Warframe or replace Warframe abilities with a subsumed one, the Helminth must be fed a certain number of resources from different categories to start the process. Almost all resources in the game can be used to feed the Helminth. They are categorized as Oxides, Calcs, Synthetics, Biotics, Femins, and Bile. Now here's the most important part you need to know about the Helminth Chrysalis system. Aside from predetermined Helminth abilities that you unlock per rank on the new system, sacrificed Warframes will also have predetermined abilities. For example, if you sacrifice Mag, then you will only pull as the subsumed ability. Okay, I know that it's too early to talk about the abilities we can subsume from every frames, and I know that it will be subjective, but theory crafting is kind of fun. And with the hint from Digital Extremes that we won't be able to subsume ultimate and signature abilities, I think we can tell what abilities we can expect for each frame. But like I've said, these are not official and just educated guesses. Okay, let's begin. Like I've said earlier, ultimate abilities can't be subsumed. The only thing that we need to do now, is to figure out what are the signature abilities of a frame. I think Digital Extremes are referring to those abilities that work efficiently for a specific Warframe, or, I could be wrong and the developer could just be referring about those conic abilities that made the frame popular. If this is true, then we shouldn't expect meta abilities, or those abilities that make a frame strong to be subsumed. Taking these thoughts into consideration, we should only expect those good abilities, and somehow remember the saying that one man's trash is another man's treasure. I know it's kind of hard to guess, but I will try my best to make my choices factual. First off, let's talk about Ash. Now I don't see the developer giving every Warframe smoke screen. In fact, I don't see all invisibility skills being considered as subsumed abilities. It would be unbalanced, and it will just be like the pre-nerf Nariman wherein the tank doesn't matter because you can be invisible. For this frame, I'm guessing that it will be either shuriken or teleport, but I have a strong feeling that it will be shuriken. I think teleport is a signature move for Asher not only because he's a ninja theme frame, but also because this ability does have a good synergy with his fourth. On the other hand, shuriken is more of a universal skill and it would create a good variety of fun builds when equipped with its augment. Yes, Digital Extremes did say that augments will be working along with the subsumed ability. The next one is Atlas, thematically. I don't see Landslide and Petrify being subsumed, because these two abilities are the most iconic for Atlas. I would say that they will let us transfer tectonics to other Warframes but, I'm hoping that it would be Petrify. Honestly, I see Petrify creating more fun builds than tectonics. If Digital Extreme's goal is to create variation and let us have some fun, then I suggest that they should also consider if the ability will create good synergy with other Warframe abilities or not. For Banshee, I would say that they will give out Sonic Boom. There's no chance that they would allow us to use both Sonar and Silence on other frames since these abilities are the most iconic for Banshee. Baruch is a tough one to pick, but I'm guessing that it would be Desolate Hands. I know that you are thinking that it would stupid to give away this frame's best damage reduction but, both Elude and Lull are what makes Baruch a passive monk, and these abilities do work with his restraint bar. I may be wrong though, and they could just let us have lull. Either of the two, we can formulate a couple of fun builds and I can't wait to try them out on specific frames. The next one is Groma. Both Elemental Ward and Vex Armor are his most iconic abilities and I don't see it being added at the Helminth Chrysalis system. So, the best thing we can get from this dragon is his Spectral Scream. Fire Breathing Warframes, ye, how fun. For Ember, I think it's a no-brainer and it will be her Fireball. Both Immolation and Fire Blast have a very strong synergy with Ember's Heat Meter so, I don't see Digital Extremes subsuming these abilities. 
Now Equinox is one of the most complex frames to subsume since she has a night and day variation. If digital extremes would somehow pursue giving us both sides, then I'm seeing Equinox's subsumed ability having an ability wheel wherein we can cycle from night and day form. The metamorphosis ability however is out of the picture, since I think this is a signature ability. We can choose between rest and rage, or pacify and provoke. Although I have the feeling that it will be her third ability, I'm hoping that the developer would consider rest and rage as I think it would create more fun build variation if transferred to other frames. For poster boy Excalibur and its Umbra version, I'm guessing it's either ye radial blind or radial javelin, slash dash won't be subsumed since it needs exalted modding, and I'm having this feeling that they might ship radial blind over radial javelin. This is just an opinion, but I think radial blind is a better choice over Excalibur's third ability, as it does create some interesting synergies with other Warframe abilities. Now it was announced that Frost will be giving away his Ice Wave ability. To be fair, this ability is better than Freeze. It creates great crowd control especially if you equipped its impedance augment. For Gara, it's either Shattered Lash or Spectro Rage. In my opinion, it would be pointless to subsume Shattered Lash since it works well with Gara's Mass Vitrify. Spectro Rage, on the other hand, could give good crowd control which would become handy for other Warframes. Here's another one that is tough to crack, Garuda. To be honest, Garuda's ability synergizes well with each other that it's hard to pick which is iconic, and which is not. But if I'm going to choose, it would be either Blood Altar or Blood Letting. Her second ability would create massive healing boost for specific frames. While I see her Blood Letting ability giving sustainable energy for high health frames. But what if, Digital Extremes decide to give us Dread Mirror? Now that would make my day, as I already got some plans on how to break enemies with this bloody mirror. The next Warframe is Gauss. You might argue with me when I say that it will be Macrush but, hear me out first, they might go with Kinetic Plating and Thermal Sunder but that would be unlikely, since these abilities need Gauss Redline Gauge to be effective. I strongly believe that it will be Macrush because Digital Extremes also love funny memes. Moving on, we have Grendel. This is a tough one since all of his abilities rely on his most iconic one, which is Feast. My question is, how would it be possible to make his other abilities work without Feast? I would be surprised if the developer will give us Feast. But look at the bright side, Grendel will be noticed if we can subsume Feast. Players will finally get Grendel, and use him as a sacrifice. Poor Grendel. But seriously, I don't know what ability will the developer choose. If it's Regurgitate, then probably they will change a bit of mechanic to make it work without consuming a target. Next, we have Harrow. Another frame that is hard to pick an ability to subsume, since all of his abilities work accordingly to make the iconic Harrow that we have right now. But if I were to choose between these three abilities, then I think it would be Condemn. Mechanically, this is the most simple ability to incorporate with other frames. It could do good when used by other frames since we have the shield gating mechanic. And I don't see digital extremes giving away infinite energy with throwable but, I do see them giving frames the penance treatment also. Harrow's second ability would also form amazing setup that I won't reveal just yet until we have the final list of abilities that can be subsumed. For Hildren, it's either Pillage or Haven. I don't see Balefire being subsumed since it needs exalted modding. Pillage would be a great addition to other Warframes for shield gating, but I don't want to assume too much as they might only give us Haven. For Inaros, I'm guessing that they will give us Desiccation. Devour and Sandstorm is more Inaros, and to be honest, it doesn't create anything fun. Pocket Sand is mechanically simple to transfer to frames, and it can provide them crowd control and finisher kills. For Hydroid, I'm thinking that they will let us use Tempest Barrage on other Warframes, it's easy to implement, and it's very handy in terms of dealing corrosive damage to enemies. Ivaro is a no-brainer, and I think they will just give us Navigator. Prowl and Quiver are obviously iconic for the Huntress frame, and I don't see Digital Extremes giving these away. While I have lots of Whipclaw fantasies on other frames, I don't see it happening sadly. I think that they will only give us Ensnare for Korra. I'm not disappointed though as this ability will create tons of synergy when added to other frames. Limbo is also a tricky Warframe to subsume, as all of his abilities are somehow interconnected with each other. One ability need the other to function better and it's kind of hard to pinpoint what abilities will the developer consider giving away to other frames. My wild guess would be that they will just give us Banish. It may not work well with other Warframe abilities, but we can use it for crowd control or in objectives wherein we need to protect a target. For Loki, I think it will be Switch Teleport. Decoy is more of a Loki thing, 
and I guess switch teleport would be a better choice for supportive purposes when you equip the safeguard switch augment. As you might have heard already, Mag will have her pull donated to other frames. This might now be useful at first glance, but it's a cool gimmick for a vacuum substitute. For Mesa, they will either give us ballistic battery or shooting gallery. Shatter shield could be a good subsume ability, but I doubt that digital extremes will be giving away Mesa's signature damage reduction. For Mirage, don't expect that you will be getting either Hall of Mirrors and Eclipse as these are no doubt's Mirage signature abilities. What we could possibly get is Sleight of Hand which is not bad as it has nuking potential with the Explosive Legumen Augment. His as Subsume ability will be Fire Walker. This was already announced and this ability will be great for speed builds. For Necros, I think they will just give us his first ability Soul Punch, while I would like to at least have Terrify, as I think it will be more useful compared to his first ability. I doubt that it would happen since this ability is somewhat unique to Necros. For our infested boy Nidas, I am thinking that they would just give us Lava. Both Virulence and Parasitic Link needs Mutation Stack and these are considered iconic for Nidas. For Nova, it should be Null Star, it's the less broken among the other abilities if transferred to other Warframe in my opinion, unless Digital Extremes want to break the game with Antimatter Drop being transferable, or they want all frames to have a teleport ability, I think they'll be sticking with the damage reduction that Nova's first ability provides. The next Warframe is Nikes, I don't see both Chaos and Mind Control being the subsumed ability for Nikes, since both of these happens to be the signature abilities of this frame. Psychic Bolt on the hand would be a good pick as it will be easy to implement in other frames, and it would create some good utility since it can both strip armor and shield. For Oberon, it should be Smite and its augment will give us more radiation damage. The Eidolon says hi to Chroma. I don't think we will be getting Hallowed Ground or Renewal since these are the abilities that define Oberon. Now, the most controversial one, Octavia. While the idea of having Mallet in all Warframes are fun, it would definitely break the game. Also, Metronome could be a good choice but like I've said earlier, infinite invisibility on all frames means that there's no point for being a tank at all. Although it's kind of disappointing, we should expect Resonator to be the subsumed ability for Octavia. For Prutea, it's either her Grenade Fan or Dispensary. Her third ability would be awesome for farming frames that love endurance runs, or those frames that are energy hungry. On the other hand, the Grenade Fan would create amazing synergy with other abilities, not only because of its shield feature, but also because of its damage potential. For Revenant, it is most likely that we will be getting his Reeve ability. Both Enthrall and Mesma skin is what make Revenant strong. I see Reeve being used for utility purposes by other frames, but it's just a guess though, as remember that this ability also works well against enthralled enemies. They might change a couple of things on this ability to make it work for other frames. The same goes for the previous abilities I've mentioned. The next is another head of scratcher. Rhino's three abilities are somehow signature moves for this frame. However, we could end up getting Charge or Raw. If I were to pick, then definitely I would choose Raw. Rhino Charge doesn't do much if we put Synergy to context. Now Saren will be donating her Molt ability to other frames as announced by one staff of Digital Extremes. It doesn't do much other than crowd control, but I'm seeing a great potential here for speed builds. For Titania, I think it should be Spellbind. As both Lantern and Tribute are abilities that are unique to Titania, it may seem a bummer but when you remember that her first ability has an augment that gives you energy, then you will realize that this could be worth the shot donating to other frames. The next Warframe is Trinity. At first, I'm thinking that it would be well of life that they'll be subsuming, but I did realize that Trinity is more of a support frame and if we consider this, then we could probably get her Link ability. It should be a good choice as armor stripping plays a vital role nowadays especially in the Steel Path mission. For our resident cat Warframe, I think we should be able to get Paralysis. Warcry is out of the picture since this is a signature ability in my opinion and, while I do love the idea of turning all frames to Spider-Man with her first ability, it won't happen since Ripline is an ability which makes Volkitty unique. For Vorban, I think it's either Tesla Nervos or Photon Strike. We won't be getting Mine Layer because simply that's a Vorban kind of thing, but I'm not sure if we will also be getting Photon Strike. I sure hope that we do, as between his first and third ability, I find Photon Strike more capable of creating fun builds with other Warframe abilities. For Volt, it was announced that it will be his shock ability. Shocking isn't it? For Wisp, I think it will be her Breach Surge ability. Reservoirs and her second ability are unique to this frame, and I don't see it being transferred to other Warframes. On the other hand, 
Breach Surge can be more of a universal skill, and could create awesome builds knowing the fact that it has some great damage boosting potential. Next is Wukong. While most of us would want Celestial Twin to be a subsumed ability, I think it won't happen since this ability is by far the most iconic for the Monkey King right now. I think the choice will be between Defy and Cloud Walker. It's either Digital Extremes want all Warframes to be Spymaster with Cloud Walker, or give them short invincibility with Defy. The last Warframe is Zephyr. What this frame needs is a rework. But if there's an ability that I think Digital Extremes will be willing to donate to other frames, that would be her airburst ability. You should be thankful that you will be able to throw some winds with you other frames. I don't see Tailwind being subsumed as this ability is unique to Zephyr, but honestly, it's better than airburst. So these are all my guesses on what ability we can transfer with the new Helminth Chrysalis system. I would really like to know your ideas and please, take the time to write them down on the comment box below. Remember that these are just speculations and nothing is final on this video. Most likely, we will see the full list of abilities during the release of Heart of Deimos, and it's fun to theorycraft and as well as speculate what we will be getting, to prepare us for the good stuff, and the worst. That's all about it boys and gals. Thank you so much for watching. Squad leader signing off. This is the future. Human error. Evolution. This is the future.